Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nali again. So this is the third uh, video in this series of determining uh, chemical formulas and in this video I'm going to talk about the determination of empirical and molecular formulas using combustion analysis. So if you remember earlier uh, in one of the earlier videos I mentioned how we do combustion analysis. This is usually applied to an organic compound which is basically a compound that only has carbon and hydrogen in it and some smaller number of nitrogen, oxygen, or halogen atoms. The way this works is you usually take the, hydro, uh, the organic compound and you put it in a furnace that looks like this. So when you put something in a furnace, usually the idea is to burn it. So you let some oxygen gas go into the furnace and that allows the combustion reaction or the burning to occur. And the products of these um, reaction are water, and carbon dioxide. So those two are formed in the form of gases and they would uh, basically you know flow out of this furnace and what you do is then you use a compound that would absorb uh, all the water so the water is all then trapped in this uh, container and then your carbon dioxide is also absorbed similarly using another compound. And then so what you can do then is you can weigh these uh, containers before and after the reaction and that would allow you to, do, to get the mass of water that's formed and the mass of carbon dioxide that's formed. And using those two masses, you're then able to go back and figure out the formula of this organic compound. One of the things that uh, terminology I want you to be comfortable with is the word hydrocarbon. This is basically an organic compound that only contain, uh, contains uh, carbon and hydrogen. So there's no other atoms in it. but just carbon and hydrogen. So, uh, you know, when, when you do combustion analysis of a hydrocarbon, basically your goal is to determine how many carbons and how many hydrogen are in the compound. Okay, let's go to, uh, you know, this slide here, which looks very similar to the one that we, uh, you, you saw earlier in the previous video for decomposition analysis, except that now you have more steps. And that's what it is with combustion analysis. You just have a couple more steps in addition to what you have to do with uh, decomposition analysis, with decomposition analysis, okay? So the first thing is you have to determine the mass of the carbon in carbon dioxide and the mass of hydrogen in water uh, from the masses of these two compounds, from the carbon dioxide and the uh, water, okay? And the reason is because we make this assumption, which is true in the way the combustion uh, experiments are set up in these combustion analysis, that all the carbon in carbon dioxide, okay, so all the carbon in the carbon dioxide comes from the carbon in the unknown sample, in your hydrocarbon or in your organic compound, and all the hydrogen in the water comes from the hydrogen in the organic compound or in the unknown, okay? So once you're able to determine the masses of carbon and hydrogen in your unknown, usually then what you have to do is determine the mass of a third element that you might have in it, which is nitrogen, oxygen, or other uh, elements. But if it's a hydrocarbon, then you're done. You just, you already have the mass of carbon and hydrogen. Now remember that once you get it in this form, once you have the mass of the elements in the compound, then you pretty much are repeating the steps that you did earlier with the decomposition analysis. You're going to take these masses and convert it to number moles for each element. You're then going to um, get the whole number ratio for these uh, elements, right, in terms of their number of moles and try to get the lowest whole number ratio. And after you have that, then it's just a matter of getting to the empirical formula. And of course, if you have molar mass, you can use that to figure out the molecular formula. Okay, so I have an example here that I want to work through to show you how you uh, get through all of these um, steps, okay? Okay, so let's read through the problem uh, a little bit before we actually work on uh, this, uh, how to solve it. It says here that you have 0.847 grams of isobutylene and this happens to be a hydrocarbon and that tells you something about the composition of these, uh, uh, the elements that compose this uh, isobutylene compound and it's burned completely. The word burn again indicates that it's combustion 
and it tells you also that you uh, produce 2.657 grams of CO2 and 1.089 grams of H2O. And the question is, what is the empirical formula? And then if the molecular weight of isobutylene is this value, 56 grams per mole, what's the molecular formula of isobutylene? So we have to find both empirical and molecular formulas. Okay, so the question is really you have this uh, isobutylene, which is the hydrocarbon. I'm just going to denote that as CXHY. CX, uh, In other words, what we're trying to figure out here is, of course, our X and our Y, what those numbers are. And um, we have 0.847 uh, grams of the isobutylene. And you do a combustion here. And in the combustion, you usually make the assumption that it's uh, using excess oxygen. Okay, so you're reacting with excess oxygen. And you produce CO2 and water. And in this case, we're told that the CO2 is 2.657 grams. And then our water is 1.089 grams. Okay? So the goal is then to use these uh, values from CO2 and water to figure out what our X and our Y value is, our empirical formula, and then our molecular formula. Okay. So let's think about this real quick here. The first step is, is if you remember from the, uh, you know, the, the flow chart that I was showing you earlier, right before the slide, uh, was that first you want to take uh, the CO2 and H2O masses and figure out how much carbon and how much hydrogen you have respectively. Okay? So the first thing is just to do mass of carbon in CO2. This is uh, fairly easy if you think about it. The only thing I need to do is figure out what is the percent composition of carbon in carbon dioxide and then multiply that by the mass and that should give me the um, mass of carbon. Now if you uh, figure out percent composition it's just a matter of doing this, right? 12, which is the atomic mass of carbon, uh, grams per mole, right? But since it's only one carbon it's just one mole divided by 44 grams per mole and since we only have one mole of CO2 that's also going to be just 12 over 44 and then you multiply this number by the 2.657 grams which is how much CO2 you have okay so this is percent composition uh, the, the numbers in parentheses are the percent composition of CO2, uh, C in CO2 and then you multiply that by the actual mass of CO2, okay? And if you do that, what you get is 0.7246, okay? I'm just going to write all of those numbers out for now. We're, we don't want to round just yet. So 0.7246, um, 4 grams of carbon. I do the same calculation next for uh, hydrogen, so mass of hydrogen in water. The only thing you need to pay careful attention is, of course, there's two uh, hydrogen in water, right? So it's one grams per mole for each uh, hydrogen, but then there's two of them. So you multiply by two moles and then divide it by 18 grams per mole in water, multiply by one mole of water. So that's the percent composition part. And then you multiply this by the actual mass of the water that you have in your uh, in your product which is 1.089 gram and if you do that what you get then is 0 0.121 0 0.121 gram of hydrogen okay okay so we have these two numbers that we got earlier for the uh, mass of carbon and mass of uh, hydrogen, right? So it was 0.72464 grams of carbon. And remember that once you have it in the form of a, a mass, what you want to do is convert this to number of moles, right? So I'm going to do this and divide it by 12 grams per mole, which is the molar mass of carbon. And if I do that, then what I get here is 0 0.0604 uh, moles of carbon. 
Let me do the same with the hydrogen. The hydrogen earlier we had 0.121 grams of hydrogen. Now I'm going to divide it by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is this one. And that gives me 0.121 uh, moles of hydrogen. And then what you want to do now is then set them to be the try to have a ratio between the two lowest whole number ratios. So it's 0.0604 mole carbon to 0.121 mole hydrogen. If you remember from the earlier video, the way we do this is we divide both of these numbers by the smaller of the numbers. In this case, 0.0604 is the smaller number. So I'm going to divide both of those numbers by 0.0604. Here's the writing for 6. And then what we have here, of course, is we have one mole carbon and then the other one is just two moles of hydrogen two moles of hydrogen so then the empirical formula in this case is CH2 N okay now we're also told to find molecular formula to find molecular formula if you think about it you just need to take the so molecular formula you just take the molar mass divided by the empirical formula mass okay so if you have the molar mass we were told earlier was 56 grams per mole and you just divide this by the empirical formula mass so empirical formula mass is just the, the formula mass of this uh, value right here which is 14 12 plus 2 so 14 grams per mole if you do that division you get um, 4 which means that the molecular formula is actually CH2 times 4, which is just C4H8. So that's the molecular formula of isobutylene. Okay, so I hope this example clarifies how you would use combustion analysis to uh, determine molecular formula as well as empirical formulas. And um, again, you want to work on the uh, uh, problems again maybe yourself to get through and see if you can solve and get the same answer that I do and then in class we'll work through more of the same type of problems and more difficult ones.